if we don't stand up, mm -hmm. I want you to know God is going to use uh, some rocks to cry out. Sir. Yes, sir. So my brothers and Again, tonight, everybody, it is my pleasure to introduce to you again our speaker. And I can imagine you would agree with me that you were truly blessed last night. Pastor Barnes is married to his beautiful wife, Jasmine Barnes, two children. He's currently the pastor in the Central State Conference of Seventh day Adventist. One thing I must let you know, he loves the Lord. His, 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 his goal is to be ready to meet Jesus when he comes. And I can imagine tonight God is going to use him again. Pastor Barnes, I want to say thanks again for just taking time out to be with us here in the, the Ebenezer Seventh-day Adventist Church and to be the presenter for our, for our prophecy series. Now, we had one person earlier from Grenada, and we have another person from Grenada, but She's not a stranger to us. She's our member because our membership is still at Ebenezer. Somebody say amen. <laughs> She's our own sister, Natalie McIntosh. She will be ministering to us uh, some of the days, some of the nights here during the series. And Sister Natalie, it's good to have you with us from the spicy, beautiful island of Grenada. Before Pastor Barnes comes to us, Sister Natalie will bless us with a message and song, after which you will hear the voice of Pastor Trevor Barnes. God bless you, everybody. Sister Natalie, I'll turn over to you. Good night, everyone. Let me just slow this down a bit. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Am I being heard? Yes, yes. Amen. It's a pleasure to be here, Pastor Smith. Thank you for giving me the honor to be here to worship to my own family. I must say, I miss you, all family misses, Ebenezer and the membership. So may your hearts be blessed with this rendition. The tomb of Buddha. Yeah. I looked inside and saw his bones. So I traveled on to see Muhammad still wrapped up in his grave clothes. Then I journeyed to a garden where old Joseph, he left him laid. But the precious lamb, God's own begotten, he was no longer in that grave if you knew him yeah. like i know him you would know that he's alive and if you felt him like i Deep inside, you know he's living, and death has died. So if you're standing in the darkness, come and step into the light. His nail-scarred hands reach out to help you and pull you safe.
from death to life friends i too i stood where you stand how could i trust oh when things on scene but just one step in his direction and then in love he rescued me if you knew him like i know him you would know that he's alive and if you felt him like i Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. I saw somebody just put in the chat, hallelujah, praise God. Uh, if you agree with that, won't you just say praise God in the chat yeah. or say amen. Yeah. Uh, God is alive. I just want to thank our dear sister uh, for that song today. Uh, I have been longing to be back with my Ebenezer family. Since last night, I am uh, just excited for the opportunity to be with you this evening. Uh, I want to once again thank uh, Pastor Smith, um, a good friend, for allowing me to be here with you today. And uh, I just want to thank you for just allowing the country preacher. I'm down here in Missouri. I'm, a, I'm just a country preacher. Just allowing the country preacher just to come up to New York and yes, be with you all uh, this week. It, it's a, definitely an honor. And uh, I count it a privilege every time I get to share the word of God with the people of God. Uh, we are going to get right into the word this evening. Uh, let me try to get everything set up here. And then after we get that set up, we'll pray and then get right into the word for this evening. Let's see here. Are we seeing that? Yes, yes, we are. We are. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, let's <clears throat> go ahead and uh, go to God in prayer. Actually, uh, Spirit just put this in my mind right before I do that. I just want to encourage you uh, to invite someone even right now. Send them a text, send them an email, and tell them we're about to get into the Word, and, 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 and you want to join us right now. You could even do that uh, as we <clears throat> speak. So let's go to God in prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so thankful for the opportunity to be together even over this virtual platform, to have the opportunity to be in your word. Uh, Father, uh, this is a time where we need your word. And if we've ever needed a word from the Lord before, Father, we know we sure do need a word from God right now. Mm -hmm. And Father, we pray that you would give uh, me uh, fluidity of speech uh, to be able to declare 
your word as it is. And then, Father, as the hearers hear the word and experience the word, I pray that they would receive it not as the word of man, but as Paul says, as it is the word of God. And then, Father, we pray that Jesus Christ would be lifted up. And as Jesus is lifted, we pray <clears throat> all men and women, boys and girls, would be drawn closer to him. And we pray, Father, that in all of our hearts would be a fresh desire to know Jesus in new ways and to grow closer to God, to not even want to live a life for a moment without God. And Father, we pray that when this time is finished, uh, that no glory would go to man, but all glory would go to you. This is our earnest prayer. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, Amen. we do pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I want to begin our time together tonight by recapping last night's message. Uh, last night we learned that in order to understand the book of Daniel, we must understand the larger biblical narrative. And we discovered that the, the larger biblical narrative uh, pulls uh, from the, the city called Babylon and another city called Jerusalem. Uh, we discovered that throughout scripture, there is this tension, this war, this fight that is going on between these two cities, Jerusalem and Babylon. And we discovered that Jerusalem represents the people of God. It represents the saints of God. Uh, and, and, and on the other hand, we discovered that Babylon represents the kingdom that is opposed to God. Uh, and, and we discovered that Babylon is known for some key things. We discovered that, that, that Babel was formed because the people did not trust God. Uh, we also discovered that uh, the people in Babylon were trying to work their way to heaven. In other words, uh, this is the system of, uh, 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 of human works, of, 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 of works righteousness, or works uh, to get to heaven. And then we discovered that uh, Babylon is not about God's glory, it is about human glory. And, and this, these are bedrock principles that that laid the foundation for Babylon. And we see that throughout scripture, Babylon re uh, reiterates or shows its ugly head over and over again. And, and, and we discovered that in uh, throughout scripture, uh, there is a fight for our allegiance. We discovered that there's a fight for allegiance to God or to Jerusalem. Uh, and there is a, a fight for allegiance to Babylon. And the question that we must ask ourselves is, who will we be aligned with? Will we be aligned with God or we, will we be aligned with man? Will we be aligned with Jerusalem or will we be aligned with Babylon? Uh, but the, the, the thing that we discovered is that in the immediate context of the book of Daniel, we discover that Babylon wins. Uh, 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 in other words, in other words, Jerusalem was de defeated. Uh, we discovered that Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem and he destroyed the walls. He destroyed the gates. He even went so low as to take the articles from the temple and put them into his temple. A a and we discovered that this meant that, 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 that Babylon's gods had defeated Jerusalem's gods. In other words, it's saying that Nebuchadnezzar was saying that his God was more powerful than the God of Israel. And, and we discovered that there are times in life where it seems like a, a, a Jerusalem has been defeated and Babylon has won. There, there are some times in life where it feels like Babylon has won. When the city is plagued with violence, it feels like Babylon has won. When oh churches are empty because of COVID, it feels like Babylon has won. When, when people lose interest in spiritual things, it feels like Babylon has won. There are times in life 
where it feels like Babylon has won. Uh, there are times when, when, when there, there are issues in the family where uh, our fathers are not getting along with sons and sons are, are not getting along with their parents and, and husbands are not getting along with their wives. In moments like this, it feels like Babylon has won. But the good news of the gospel today is that it only appears that Babylon has won. Hmm. Because Babylon does not win. I want you to know today that Babylon doesn't win because God wins. Amen. See, it only looked like Babylon had won. The text tells us that God was still sovereign. We know that God's still sovereign because in Daniel chapter 1, we discovered that on multiple occasions, it says that God gave. God gave Jerusalem over to Nebuchadnezzar. God gave uh, Jehoiakim over to Nebuchadnezzar. And God gave the articles of the temple over to Nebuchadnezzar. In other words, it may have looked like Babylon won, uh, but I want to let you mm. know uh, that God is still in control. I want to let you Amen. know that no matter how chaotic your life may be, I want you to know no matter how difficult it can be, we need to have hope today because our God still wins. Amen. So that is the hope that we learned about yesterday. But today we want to dive a little deeper into chapter one. And, 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 and here is what we learned. Here's the, 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 the nutshell, the, the, uh, the, the husk of what chapter one is, or what we're going to go over tonight. Uh, the, the husk is that, that, that although God is still in control, Babylon still pulls for our allegiance. Say that one more time. Even though God is in control, we need to recognize that Babylon pulls for our allegiance. You see, uh, uh, Babylon entices us to reject God and accepts its ways. Mm. And the question is, how do we deal with this temptation? How do we deal with the temptations that Babylon pulls uh, us towards? How do we deal with the, 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 the things that Babylon pulls us towards? And, and, and what we discover is that we must resist. I wish I was in the church tonight. I would just tell the church to say resist. <laughs> Matter of fact, you could type it into the chat. You could just say resist. Uh -huh, Go ahead uh -huh. and type that into the chat. If you're hearing that tonight, that God is telling us that what we must do with the temptations of Babylon is we must resist. In other words, uh, even though the temptation may come, we're not defeated. We still have a choice. We still have God on our side. We can resist Babylon's ways while we live in Babylon. And this is what Daniel and his friends did. They stood up against the, the temptations of Babylon. They stood up in resistance. They said that they're going to fight against the power of Babylon. They would fight against the ways of Babylon. They would fight against the methods of Babylon. They would fight against the ways of Babylon. And tonight I'm telling you that yes, there sir. is a war cry that's going out to the church of the living God. And that war cry is we must fight. We yes, must sir. resist. Yes, we sir. must go against the ways of Babylon. We must stand up like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We must fight yes. against the powers that be. Amen. In other words, I want you to know that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're the original Juan Carloses. They are the original Chuck D's. They are the original Colin Kaepernick's that take a knee to stand against the system. They fight against the power of Babylon, and they fight for God and with God. And today, my brothers and sisters, we must also fight. So what happened? Daniel and his friends got to Babylon we discovered that they were placed into the University of Babylon. <laughs> there they got the finest education available. But not only did they get the finest education available, uh, we discovered that they were served food from the king's table. And Daniel decided that he would resist. 
Daniel, the Bible tells us, purposed in his heart that he would not eat the king's food. So we must understand that, 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 that what's going on is that there is this contrast going on in the scripture. There is a battle that's raging in the scripture. And I want to show you that battle. I want to uh, I'll teach you a little something in the text right now. What's, what's going on in the text is that you will remember that we already established, we talked about last night, just recapped it, that God gave. We saw uh, that God gave Jehoiakim, he gave Jerusalem, he gave the articles of the temple, uh, uh, he gave Daniel favor, he, he, he gave, that, that's all in chapter one. Uh, uh, but, but you'll notice in the text that God is not the only one who's given. You'll notice in the text, uh, there is a, 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 a Hebrew word called Natan. And this Hebrew word Natan is the same root word for uh, 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 In other words, what the text is trying to teach us is that at the same time that God gave, Nebuchadnezzar gave. And, and, and the reason that this is going on is because, again, there is a battle for allegiance. Uh -huh, the uh -huh. question is, will Daniel and his friends remain allied to God? Or will they align themselves with Nebuchadnezzar? That, that, that's the question that's going on in the text. That's the fight that's going on. And, and, and it's the same fight that we have today. There is a fight for our allegiance. If we will be loyal to God or the Nebuchadnezzars of our day. Will we be loyal to God? or the Babylons of our day. Uh, the, the, the question is, in this pool for our allegiance, where will we stand? I want you to understand that this fight for allegiance is really deep. It goes so deep that we discover uh, uh, here that, that, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar was, so, was trying to get the allegiance of those Hebrew boys so much that he even changed their name are changing their name changing their spiritual outlook by changing their name he's trying to uh, uh, uh cut them off from their uh, background from their history from their heritage and from their culture and even from their god hmm. look what it says daniel means god is my judge but his name was changed to Belshazzar. May uh -huh. Bel protect his life. Mm. Hananiah, his name meant grace of God. His name was changed to Shadrach, order of a coup. Michelle, his name means uh, who is like God. And Meshach, uh, 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 his name was changed to Meshach, who is like a coup. Uh, uh, Azariah, his name meant Yahweh has helped. His name was changed to Abednego, servant of Nego. Uh, mm. So here we can see that, that, that what is going on is that Nebuchadnezzar is trying to change the, the outlook, the taste, the culture, the worldview of Daniel and his friends. And, and, and in the middle of what's going on, this is a battle that is also about who will give Daniel and his friends success. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, by, 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 by giving food, by giving education, and by giving them a new name, Nebuchadnezzar is setting himself up as the source for these young men's success. In other words, uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar is saying, look, I've given you education. I've given you a job. I've given you an identity. You would be nothing without me. Uh, he is trying to get them tied to who he is and, 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 and what Nebuchadnezzar is about. Uh, I, I, let me illustrate it another way. Uh, ha have you ever eaten Wheaties? Um, uh, Wheaties is called the, the breakfast of champions. And, 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 and you can see there that uh, Michael Jordan is on the, the box, on that Wheaties box. Uh, now, uh, here's what's going on with Wheaties. What Wheaties is doing is they are making an inference. Uh, and, and here is what the inference is. 
the inference is if you eat Wheaties, you're going to be able to play basketball like Michael Jordan. <laughs> uh, in other words, if you eat Wheaties, you're going to uh, be able to soar like Mike. Uh, if you eat Wheaties, you're going to be able to uh, cross the ball over like Mike. Uh, if, if you eat your Wheaties, you're, you're going to be able to do that patented turnaround like Mike. That's the inference. And, and, and so, so consciously or subconsciously, uh, our success is tied to what we eat. Uh, in other words, the, 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 the idea is that, the, that, that their, their, their outlook, their success is tied to what they do and, and what they eat. And I want you to understand today, my brothers and sisters, that this is what Nebuchadnezzar is doing. Nebuchadnezzar, my brothers and sisters, is giving Daniel and his friends food so that he can be the one on the Wheaties box. Uh -huh. In other words, uh, if you eat the king's meat, you're going to be able to be like the king. Mm. You're going to have success like the king. Oh, You're going to be exalted like the king. Nebuchadnezzar mm. is the one on the Wheaties box. And he's saying, if you eat my food, mm. you're going to be able to be blessed yeah. like me. You're going to be able to have all I have. And so this is what's going on. The, the king, the Bible tells us, gave the young man a certain amount of food and wine every day, just like the food he ate. Mm -hmm. so, question now is, what will Daniel and his friends do? Will they bow down? And will they eat the king's meat? The Bible tells us what they did. The Bible tells us that they resisted. Mm. They wanted to make it clear that man did not give them their success Come on their now. success only belonged to God. Yes, uh, they sir. understood what the psalmist said. When success does not come from the east and success does not come from the west because success only comes from above. I'm wondering today, are there some folk at Ebenezer? Are there some people in New York City and around the world that recognize that God is the one who sets you up and yes, God is the one who can take people down. Come on I'm up, wondering preacher. today, are there some folk that know that all of their help comes oh. from the Lord? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He decided yes, sir. that they would not give Nebuchadnezzar the glory for what God was trying to do in their life. They resisted against Babylonian programming. They, 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 they resisted. But, 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 but I, I want you to notice something here. This education was for about a three-year period, and they were cha uh, trained in the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. But, but, but I want you to notice that, that, that Daniel and his friends do something to me that's really intriguing. It, it, it's really thought-provoking to me. You, you see, Daniel and his friends... Um, uh, they, they do not resist in the way that modern resistance movements do. You know, there are modern resistance movements today. <laughs> there, there, there are still uh, organizations that, that fight against the oppression that happens in the world and in society and fights against the dominant cultures that try to oppress us. Uh, you, you may y'all are in New York, so I, I, I know you're familiar with that. You're you're familiar with Muslims, and you're familiar with the Hebrew Israelites. These are resistance movements, and and and, and you'll notice that 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 Daniel and his friends don't do what modern resistance movements do. Uh, uh, here's what I mean: you'll notice that Daniel and his friends don't fight against the change of their name. Hmm. It's not in the text. It's not there. You, you, you'll notice that they, they don't argue about the fact that uh, 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 they, um, uh, 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 their names were changed. You, you'll also notice that, that they don't argue uh, and they don't fight against the uh, education that they are to receive. 
They're, they're different than the modern resistance movements. You, 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 you know about modern resistance movements. For example, uh, this gentleman that you see on the screen, his name was Malcolm Little, but, but he said, I'm not gonna uh, go by that name. He, he, he resisted uh, against the, the name, they, they call it the slave name that was given to them. Uh, instead of being called Malcolm Little, we know him as Malcolm X. Mm. Uh, and, and, and not only that, uh, we discover that uh, the, a lot of the resistance groups, they, they develop separate educational systems. So they live within the culture, but they live as a subgroup of the culture. Daniel didn't do that. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's wrong to have a separate educational system. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with uh, 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 saying that you want a different name. But, but what I am saying that it's important for us to understand where Daniel resisted. Come on now. Notice where Daniel resists. Daniel resists when it comes to eating the king's meat. Oh, mercy. This was the area where Daniel resisted. Come on up, preacher. This is Mr. where Daniel took his stand. This is where Daniel would not compromise. Daniel Amen. purpose in his heart that he would not eat the king's meat. We gotta pause here for a moment. Because the truth of the matter is that there are some who have fallen in love <laughs> with the king's meat. <laughs> uh, we eat the scraps and the crap that the king has given to us. Uh, it, I, I want to say to us today that it's not even hidden anymore. <laughs> I'm on Facebook and I see members eating the king's meat. Mm. Uh, it's not even First. hidden. Folks don't do it in the shadows. First. Folks do it wide and open. They're bold on social media eating the king's meat. But I got some news for you today. Uh -huh. I got some news. The news is that if you eat the king's meat, you're going to get the king's diseases. Come on now, preacher. I, I'm repeating one more time. Yes, sir. If you eat the king's meat, you're going to get the king's diseases. Uh -huh. And I want to uh -huh. tell you that that's what's happening in our community. Y'all know I'm down in St. Louis, Missouri. And, 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 and this is uh, an amazing statistic that I found. I'm in a black area, all right? I, I'm in a black area. And what I discovered is that children born uh, in another area that's just a few miles from my church, they live 18 years less than by St. Louis University or Washington University in Clayton. They live 18 years less, and it's only a six mile difference between the two areas. Why? Because our people have given in to the king's meat. Have oh, mercy. And the king's meat is killing us. It is not by chance, I believe, that uh, this evening, the health nugget this evening was on diabetes. That is, incidentally, a preventable disease. And, 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 and there are diseases that are taking us out, taking our community out. We are killing ourselves by what we put in our mouths, my brothers and sisters, uh, by my church, my, my, by my community. We live 15 years shorter by Clayton. Uh, uh, there are other areas of the city that have similar, similar demographics. And I would bet it's the same thing in New York City. It's probably the same thing by Ebenezer Church. It's probably the same thing in many areas of Brooklyn and Queens and, and Staten Island, that, that, that there are some areas that live a year shorter. There are years that are cut off from the lives of the people of God. Why? Because we've given in. Have mercy, Lord. Look at this, look at this, look at this. There's a, another statistic from the Minority uh, Health Report on uh, healthandhumanservices.gov that said African-Americans are 60% more likely to be diagnosed with diabetes uh, than their Anglo counterparts. 60% more likely. You know what's going on? It's, uh, it's being fulfilled. What's said in Romans 11.9, that's what I believe. Paul said it this way, let their table become a trap. Let their table become a snare and a stumbling block to them. 
my mm. brothers and sisters today uh, uh don't let your table become a trap i know it may smell good i know it may uh, uh taste good but you're cutting off your life and the question is as we learned in the sabbath school lesson last week why would you die don't choose a uh, death choose life amen i want you to know today that god has given us amazing uh, laws help laws right uh they're natural laws so that if you jump out of a building what takes you down gravity but there's also health laws that 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 teach us what we should eat and what we shouldn't eat and if we follow god's health laws we're blessed we're blessed with long life we're blessed with good health we're blessed with lengths of days but if we don't follow what god said instead of having long life we end up with a short life instead of being blessed we end up being cursed my lord but here's the thing here's the thing here's the thing that i've discovered my brothers and sisters i've discovered something that if we won't hold up the banner of doing what god has told us to do god's gonna get his message out mm -hmm. <laughs> anyhow I, i've discovered that there are some rocks that are crying out <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah i've discovered yeah. you know when, when, when I was in college, uh, uh, Pastor Smith, when I was in college, being a, 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 a vegan or vegetarian, you, you couldn't find stuff to eat down there in Alabama. You couldn't find anything to eat uh, in Texas. You couldn't find anything to eat in Missouri. But do you know that the world has, has embraced a health way? Yes, sir. With people like Chris Paul, NBA player, who just signed a four-year $120 million contract at the age of 35. Now you gotta ask yourself a question. How does a 35 year old sign a contract for four more years to play in the NBA? Mm. Well, 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 well uh, the basketball is a young man's sport. <laughs> I, I went and played basketball a couple weeks ago, Pastor Smith, yeah. I went out and, and after I played a little basketball a couple weeks ago, I, it took me two days to recover because <laughs> oh, basketball oh, is a young man sport mm. but chris paul has elongated his nba career and do you know how he's elongated his nba career he did it by embracing a plant-based diet he said that i got stronger i've got faster and i have better recovery because he has embraced what god has told us to do not only that he shared it with lebron james look at what lebron said LeBron said, and this is just talking about cutting pork out of his diet. LeBron doesn't eat pork. LeBron said, I, I, I've made a change to keep pork out of my body. Uh, uh, one of uh, 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 those things is I cut pork out. He says, you can tell the difference. Uh, uh, it's in how I recover and the energy I have. It has helped a lot with my performance. Overall, I just been feeling good. He said, I just been feeling better. And LeBron is playing at the peak of, of his powers. And it's not just NBA players. Colin Kaepernick, Andre 3000, Tahara uh, Nelson, Vanessa Williams, CeeLo Green, RZA, and, and, and all of these different people. You look at Bill Clinton, John Sally, Pamela Anderson, Mike Tyson, and the list goes on and on. All of these people have embraced the health message because if we don't stand up, mm -hmm. I want you to know God is going to use a, some rocks to cry out sir yes sir so my brothers and sisters today the question is have we given in to the king's me mm. i want you to know today that there's good news for us yes sir yes sir. I, I want you to know that it doesn't stop there because god is ever willing to embrace us god is ever willing to accept us god is ever willing to, uh, to heal us and to restore us. He says, I'm the God who heals you. I wanna let you know today that God can heal your body. I want you to know today that, that if we are obedient and if we follow his will, God has put mechanisms in our body that can heal us. There are some diseases that we have that are a result of, of, of what we eat and what we put into our bodies. But I want you to know today that God has the power to heal you. Amen. I want you to know that you don't have to struggle walking up those steps anymore. Mm -hmm. I want you to know you don't have to uh, 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 wish you can lose those pounds that you always have wanted to, to lose. 
You don't have to struggle with the hereditary diseases that have been passed down in your family from generation to generation. Why? Because we serve a God Amen. that can heal us. Do you believe that Amen. today? Amen. Uh, I believe that today. And so, uh, so, 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 uh, I want you to realize something. That Daniel followed what God said. And, and, and the Bible tells us the blessing that God gave him. At the end, the Bible tells us that Daniel looked healthier mm -hmm. and he looked better nourished. And I want to let you know that God is not a respecter of persons. Amen. What he did Amen. for Daniel, he'll also do for you. Amen. But, but the interesting thing, though, I need to pivot here, because the interesting thing is, is, is Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not eat the king's meat. But I want you to understand that Daniel didn't purpose in his heart not to eat the king's meat because Daniel wanted to be vegan. That wasn't his purpose. Daniel didn't do it because he wanted to be vegetarian. Daniel didn't do it because he wanted a, a, a Miami beach body. <laughs> uh, Daniel didn't do it because he just wanted to eat plant-based. Uh, uh, Daniel didn't do it because he wanted to shed a few pounds. Daniel had something bigger in mind when he decided that he would not eat the king's meat. Well, Pastor Barnes, what, what, what is it that was going on in Daniel's mind? Well, let's yeah. go to the text, because the text tells us what was going on in Daniel's mind. The Bible says that Daniel purposed in his heart yes, that he would not defile himself. himself with the king's delicacies. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he would not defile himself with the king's meat. Now, now, what in the world does this word defile me? That's not a, a word that we typically use in our language today. What, what, what in the world does it mean that, 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 that Daniel would not defile? What does this word defile mean? Defile means to be ceremonially impure mm. or unclean. Yes, sir. Uh, to defile means to be polluted. Uh, uh, in the Bible, we've got to understand this. Let me paint the picture. Uh, this is a, a result of ceremonial uh, 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 impurity. Let me paint the picture. What, what's going on, we must understand that Jehovah, Yahweh, was different than the other gods. While the other gods were far off and away from the people, Jehovah was different. Amen. Jehovah wanted to be with the people, to walk amongst the people and to live amongst the people. Matter of fact, he said it this way. We may be familiar with this verse, Exodus 25, verse 8. He said, let them make me a sanctuary so that I may what? Dwell, Dwell amongst them. In other words, God wanted to be amongst his people. But what we must understand is there is a issue, there is a challenge with God being amongst his people. And that is that there are some things that can block the spiritual receptors mm. from God being amongst his people. There are some things, and the things that can block it is defilement. Yeah. I want you to think about it as a cell phone. Uh, we are all familiar with cell phones today, and, 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 and the amazing thing about cell phones is they're amazing technology. You can take a phone with you anywhere you go. But the, the challenge to a cell phone is that cell phones can run into dead zones. Well, A, a dead zone is where you, you, you can have your phone, but there is something that's blocking the connection. There, 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 there's something blocking it so that you're not able to receive the phone call. You're not able to receive the text. You're not able to communicate because you're in a dead zone. And God's saying, look, my people, there are things that cause a dead zone. It's not that I'm there. It's not that the cell phone tower is not there, but there's something that prevents you from being able to receive my presence and for me to be amongst you and walk amongst you and you be able to feel and embrace my presence. And this is why Daniel purpose in his heart.
Yeah. That he would not defile himself with the king's meat. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself because he recognized defilement created a spiritual dead zone. I want to go to Leviticus to show you this. This is what it says in the book of Leviticus chapter 11. It says, you shall not make yourselves a detestable with any swarming thing that swarms. Mm. And you shall not defile yourself with them and become unclean through them. For I am the Lord your God. I want you to consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am holy. You shall not defile yourself with any swarming thing that crawls on the ground. For I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt to yes, be your God. Therefore, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Daniel, uh, Leviticus 11, first of all, tells us there are certain things that we've got to stay away from on the land. Yes, sir. And there's certain things we've got to stay away from in the air. Mm -hmm. And there's certain things that we've got to stay away from in the water because these things will cause spiritual dead zones. And God mm -hmm. is saying, look, I want you to stay away from these things because I want you to be holy. I yes, want sir. you to be holy mind. I yes, want sir. you to walk, I want to walk in you and live in you. And this is why Daniel decided to purpose in his heart that he would not defile himself because Daniel wanted God's presence Amen. to be in him. Amen. Today, 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 I'm wondering, my brothers and sisters, do we desire God's presence like Daniel desired God's presence? Do we desire God's presence so much that we're saying, I don't want anything in my life that would cut off the presence of God in my life. Mercy. If there's Mercy. something God that's there that would defile me, if it's the music that I'm listening to, it's if the TV shows that I'm watching, if it's the streaming shows that I'm watching, if there's something that I'm eating, God, that's causing your presence to be in a spiritual dead zone. God, I don't want it there, God. On, I have purpose yes, sir. in my heart that yes, I will sir. not defile myself. God, I want you more than anything else. God, whatever it is, cut it out. Amen. Because, God, mm. I want your presence. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I'm wondering today, are there some people, won't you put in the chat, that I want God's presence more than anything else? That I won't. Don't want anything to defile my spirit with God and my connection with God. My brothers and sisters today, you see, Daniel was saying that he wanted to be like Enoch and walk with God. Yeah, Daniel yeah. was saying like Jesus, that I do nothing without the Father, that, that, that I want to be so close to God, that I want to walk with God and talk with God and be with God. And I don't want anything to get in the way of my connection to God. I want you to show, show you this in one more verse. I want to show you this in Leviticus chapter 20. Look at this. He says, I am the Lord your God, mm -hmm. who has set you apart from the nations. You must therefore make a distinction between what's clean and what's unclean. The yeah. clean and unclean animals, those which I've set apart as clean for you, you are to be holy to me. Because I am the Lord, I'm holy, and I've set you apart from the nations to be my own. Yeah. Do you get what's going on here? Daniel is saying that even though I'm in Babylon, God, I'm yours. Yeah. Oh, Lord Jesus. Even though I'm in Babylon, God, I still worship you. Yes, sir. God, even though I'm in Babylon, I still love you. Even though I'm in Babylon, I still have faith in you. And I'm wondering today, are there some people who are living in the Babylons of this world? Oh. The New York Cities, the St. Louis's, the San Francisco's, the Atlanta's, and we're saying, God, I still claim you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's my home. Yes, oh, sir. God. 
yes. spirit of the living God. Yes. I make myself a temple mm. to be inhabited by you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, mm -hmm. pure and holy, yeah. tried and true. And with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, just for you. Yes. Brothers and sisters, Daniel decided that he didn't want anything to back his connection with God. And because of that, you know what God did for Daniel? The Bible says that God caused the officials to show Daniel favor. I want you to know, when you decide that you want God more than anything else, I want you to know the good news today is that God will bless us with favor. That, that, that this is not something Daniel could earn. This is not something that Daniel could do on his own. That God gave Daniel supernatural favor. I want you to know today that God blesses the righteous yes. with favor as a shield. He blocks some things mm -hmm. that the devil meant to send your way if you trust in him yes, because sir. he gives you favor. Uh -huh. as a shield yes. and the fiery darts of the enemy are blocked because he gives you favor yes, sir. <laughs> as Hallelujah. a shield Hallelujah. that job that you have is because mm -hmm. of his favor that promotion you have is because of his favor the health you have is because of his favor you've got all you have because he gives you favor as a shield are there any people in ebenezer today are there any people watching in Jamaica or another country today that can say, I know I've got God's favor as a shield? Praise. But not only did he give him favor, the Bible tells us that God gave him knowledge, mm -hmm. wisdom, mm -hmm. and understanding of all kinds of literature. I want you to know that God will give blessings uh -huh. that are not just in the life to come. I want to let you know that God's blessings aren't just for the earth made new. I want to let you know that God can give you blessings right now. But the only way that God's going to give you those blessings right now is if he can trust you to be able to say no to the king's meat and to know that you want him even more than those blessings. You see, the challenge with the church is we want the blessings, but we don't want God. But God's yeah. saying, if you want me, then I'm willing to give you, I can entrust with you anything because I know that I can give it to you, I can take it away from you, and you'll still want me. So in the end, like Job, he had it in the beginning, but mm -hmm. he got it in the end because he can say, the Lord giveth, yes. and the Lord taketh away. Uh, yes. Blessed Amen. be the name uh, of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters today, God, God gave him blessings that were in this life. He, he, he gave him wisdom. He gave him knowledge. He gave him understanding. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, today, as we begin to wrap this up, as we close down, I want you to know that God is the same God yeah. who can bless us yeah. with blessings for this life. He can give us wisdom. He can give us knowledge. And he can give us understanding. Praise God. But what God is looking for from his people is a desire for holiness. Amen. A desire for God's presence. A desire to want God more than anything else. My, my brothers and sisters today, do you desire God more than anything else? Are we truly saying that we are seeking him first, his kingdom, and his righteousness? Then everything else will be added on to us. There's a song that says, God, you are the air I breathe. Yeah, yeah. You are the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. Yeah. God, you are my daily bread. Yeah. God, you are my daily bread. Your, 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 your very word mm -hmm. is spoken in me. And I, oh God, 
I'm desperate for you. Yeah, yeah. And God, I'm lost without you. Yeah. I, I'm wondering today, are there some people that are saying, God, I'm lost without you. God, I'm desperate for you. God, I want you above everything else like Daniel did, like those Hebrew boys did. God, I'm not after your hand, but I'm after your heart. Amen. God, I, I don't want to bow down to the king's uh, and eat the king's meat because God, I want you to walk with me, Amen. talk with me, Amen. be in me, and live in me. Amen. I want to walk with you like Enoch walked with you. I want to talk with you. I want to see your presence. I want to go up into the thick cloud. God, I want to be with you. Amen. I want you to know that, 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 that the amazing thing about this, if this is your heart's desire, here's the amazing thing about it. Woo, listen to this. Here's the amazing thing that I want to let you know today. Ask and you shall receive. Amen. Amen. Seek and you shall find. Amen. And the door will be open unto you. Amen. If that is your desire, that you want the presence of God with you, why don't you just type in the chat, God, I want your presence. God, I want your presence. Like Moses says, God, we're not leaving here. We're not going to, you're not sending the angel of the Lord. We're going to wait for you. No, we, we're not going anywhere, God, without you <laughs> today. We must have that same heart that Daniel had, the same heart that Moses had, the same heart that Enoch had, the same heart that David had, that he said, you know what? We got to get that ark. We got to put it in Jerusalem. I want God's presence with me. My brothers and sisters today, if we want that with all of our heart, Jesus says, if you hunger and if you thirst after righteousness, you're going to be filled. And I pray, I, I promise you today that God is filling our hearts with the hope of righteousness and the hope of his presence that only God can give us. Amen. I want to pray a special blessing over Ebenezer and the rest of the Ebenezer family that is watching across the globe right now. Let's go to God. Heavenly Father. We recognize today that we need your presence. Yes. And Father, today we're saying we're lost mm. without you. Father. We are desperate for you. We long for your holy presence to live within us. And Father, tonight we are praying like the words of that old song. We're saying in to my heart. Yes. In to my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. But Father, we recognize in order for that to happen, there got to be some things that we cut out. You don't just walk up in any place. You're not the type of person being that, 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 that walks into a place where we really don't want you. And so, Father, if we really want you, Father, whatever it is that is getting in the way of your presence, it might be the king's meat. It might be an illicit relationship. It might be some drugs. Mm. It might be some alcohol. It might be some bad thoughts that we have. It, 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 I don't know what it is that is in the lives of the people who are watching and listening, Father, but whatever it is, I pray tonight that even before we get off the line, that those things would be surrendered to Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Pray, Father, that those, the, 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 the hatred, the anger, the covetousness, those things that cause conflict in church, conflict in the home, whatever it is that would, that, that, that would uh, block the spiritual reception of the Holy Ghost in Ebenezer Seventh-day Adventist Church. Father, won't you remove it right now? In the Father, name. we give ourselves to you yes. to have your way and to remove whatever it is that needs to be removed. Oh, God, won't you do that for us? Yes. Won't you revive us? Won't you pour your spirit out on us? 
And then perhaps there's somebody today who's saying, you know what, I've heard this and I, I, I've never walked with God. <laughs> I've, I've never had God in my life. I've never really surrendered to God. I've never been baptized. I, I, I've never had Bible studies. Right now, it's your time. Oh man, this is an amazing time. This is your season. This is the best time of your life. I want to give you that opportunity. I want to extend that, that, that opportunity to you. And, and this is what I'm going to do. I, I would love for you to just raise your hand in the chat. If you raise your hand in the chat, uh, Pastor Smith and, and the other team, they're going to follow up with you and, and they're going to uh, help you, help assist you on your journey. I see somebody's hand has been raised. Glory be to God. There's somebody else today that needs to raise their hand to give their life to Jesus Christ, to have his presence walk with them and talk with them and to say, you are my own. You're my child. That is what God wants, for you, wants to do for you today. He wants his presence to be in you. And there's somebody else today that God is tugging on your heart. Don't yeah. resist. This is your moment. This is the best time of your life. The best day for the rest of your life. Why don't you just raise your hand wherever you, got, wherever you are. Amen. That God is speaking to you today. Maybe you're on a phone and you're not able to call, uh, to raise your hand. You don't have that option. I, I just invite you to, to, to contact uh, 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 the Pastor Smith and the rest of the team, and they will be able to assist you on that journey. Whatever it is, we want to be there to help disciple you, to help you to grow in Jesus Christ so that we all can experience a community that has God walking up and down the aisles of Ebenezer with his presence and with his spirit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we have heard your word. And Father, we have seen that there are those that are responding. We pray, Father, for that person who may be standing in the valley of decision, that they decide to allow the spirit of the living God to move in their heart. Whatever it is that's blocking the spirit of the living God, we pray, Father, that whatever it is would be removed so that they can feel your presence in a new way than they've ever experienced your presence before. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. And we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would show yourself strong in our lives, that we would feel your presence as you are in our hearts, stronger than we've ever felt before. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.